Hey y'all, my name is Nat. I hope you're having a terrific day today. And for this video, we are doing a 5x5 five five Dark Academia style. So first off, if you are unaware, 5x5 five five is my series in which I am trying to find five five-star reads. I base each of them off a different theme, so I've already done a Try a Chapter Challenge and the Halloween edition. This time around, however, we are doing Dark Academia style. If you're unaware, Dark Academia is an aesthetic that revolves around classic literature, the pursuit of self-discovery, and a general passion for knowledge and learning. It is one of several variations, each with its own unique historical focus. Particularly, I know the big one is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. However, this book is like 600 pages long and is a bit intimidating to me. Instead, I'm going to be diving into some others that were already on my to-be-read list that also fit into the Dark Academia theme. Unsurprisingly, most of these are mystery style, but I do have two that also are fantasies, technically. I'm going to be giving you guys a little summary of each of these books, and then in the updates, I will give a 50% with a estimated rating and then a final update with a actual rating. I will preface this by saying I don't know a ton about these going in. They have some form of dark academia which means they are slightly set in a school setting. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's go! First up, I'm going to be reading Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. I haven't actually read any of her stuff before, but she is supposed to be a pretty well-known fantasy writer. This story is set in a magical school called the Scholomance, but you are not really ever supposed to be alone. In fact, most of the school is actually trying to kill you, either fellow students or the monsters that try and inhabit the school. I believe there aren't any teachers, there aren't really a lot of rules, it's pretty much kind of Lord of the Flies in there. However, our main character is supposed to be incredibly powerful when it comes to like really deadly magic, so she is actually probably the safest person in the school. This is the first of a series and it is also the book club pick for the month for the pros before bros. Next I'll also be reading The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. I believe this is set 17 years after these four girls are suspended or like, kicked out of their boarding school and something happened which ended in the disappearance of one of the girl's father who was also the school's art teacher. Next I'll be reading People Like Us by Dana Mel. Meal? Mel? I think it's Mel. And we are focusing on Kay who is the soccer star at the school and is very popular but when a, another student's body is found she ends up getting roped into this revenge scheme that the girl has set up after her death. I'm also going to be reading Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I haven't read any of her other stuff yet. I know, I'm sorry. I'm hoping to start off with this one so I don't really have any expectations from her going in because this was her first adult novel. I believe this is following a girl named Galaxy who was one of the only survivors in this like giant massacre and then she gets asked to go to Yale to join this secret society because she can actually see ghosts. And I think she ends up getting like pulled into this mystery and having to try and solve it. Wow, just realized my phone was like slowly sliding down so sorry that angle has probably changed a lot in this video. Finally, I'm going to be reading Bunny by Mona Awad, I want to say is how it's pronounced. This is set in a grad school, specifically a English department, in which there are these women who all are like friends and cutesy and sweet and they call each other Bunny constantly and they end up inviting this other girl into the group to join. That's about all I know. I've heard this is really weird. <laughs> Alright y'all, so I will give you an update when I have hit the 50% mark on the first book I am reading. Hey y'all, so I have hit the halfway point in Deadly Education and this feels like I'm reading dreary fan fiction. Our main character, Elle, is a mix between Draco Malfoy, Hermione Granger, and Voldemort. She is basically destined to become an evil wizard, witch, whichever, but she isn't happy about it. She's learned to just kind of accept it, and because of this, she automatically assumes people just do not like her, so she doesn't have any friends, and she doesn't even really think of people as people. She thinks of them as assets, and like, what can they do for me in exchange for something I can do for them? On the opposite side, Orion, who is our Harry Potter kind of character, realizes that 
Elle could possibly be a danger and takes it upon himself to police her. I just, you can see the romance building already. Like you, you can tell it's coming a hundred percent. So far, I do really like the magic system. Uh, this discusses the use of mana and having to store it up and how they have to have a certain supply in order to do their magic. But there's a lot of info dumping in this. There was one chapter that I think was almost nothing but info dumping. Really don't care for it. I will say I appreciate the blueprints we have in this book that I do think can kind of make it a little easier to understand certain sections when she's discussing the school because you can literally follow along. I think it's really awesome that Naomi Novik has included a lot of diversity in this. Uh, our main character Elle is actually half Indian. However, with that, it doesn't add anything to the story, like it doesn't really deepen any characters. In fact, most of the side characters who are mentioned, a like, line about maybe where they're from or like their culture or the kind of language they speak will be mentioned, but that character will have no other underlying characteristics. I haven't hit the point yet, but I do know there's also supposed to be a certain passage that is insensitive towards people who have dreadlocks. I will put a link to Jess Owens's book tea community video because I think she dived into it, as well as mentioned Naomi Novak's response to this issue. Thus far, if I'm being completely honest, the only thing I have any stake in is the romantic element between Elle and Orion. The magic system's cool, but like, there doesn't just really seem to be much plot in all honesty. I don't, I don't really understand what's the point of the story. So I think for now I'm gonna go with 2.5 stars, 3. I'm kind of feeling like not meh but not good, so let's go with the 2.5 stars. Hey y'all, so I have finished Deadly Education and this book frustrates me because this was like 60% world building, mostly done in info dumping, 20% focused on the romance, and 20% plot. And that plot really didn't start until last hundred pages, maybe. And because of that, I'm really just wondering, like, what was the point of this book other than to just establish the world? Like, I very much can tell this is the start of a series. Nothing really happened, in all honesty, and I don't think that's a great way to start off. I will say I think the writing for action scenes was really well done because they were fast-paced, they got your heart racing, they were suspenseful, and those would really pull me in. I had fun with them. but. Other than that, the only thing I really enjoyed was the romance aspect, if I'm being honest, and it's because it's an enemies to lovers, and we all know I love enemies to lovers. Doesn't take a lot to hook me with that. I also finally realized what the monsters in this made me think of, so they're called Malacaria, or Mals for short, I believe, and they kind of make me think of like the evil souls in Soul Eater, which is my favorite anime. So. That was cool. <laughs> I really was not planning to continue this series for most of this book. Was comparing it to Harry Potter. Like, I, I can't even lie because that's what it felt like it was trying to be. I don't think I would say this was a 2.5 stars. I think I would say it's a three star read. I think the magical school setting is really cool, but only thing that had me invested was the romance. Hey y'all, so I've hit the halfway point in People Like Us and I think this has had the fastest kickoff out of any of the other books I've started so far. Literally within the first chapter, our main character and her friends end up coming upon the dead body of one of their fellow classmates and not long after that, Kay ends up discovering an email from the dead classmate in which she is basically being blackmailed to kind of expose other girls at this school for the terrible things they've done, all because each of them wronged the victim in some way. It's 
it's kind of been very reminiscent to One of Us is Lying, and I do like that. However, one thing I haven't been a big fan of is occasionally we'll get a little like jump back in time to see some event that caused a bunch of drama either between the friend group or the friend group's like significant others or with the victim Jessica. There's also some terrible awful that we know Kay was a part of from her old school and it hasn't been revealed to us yet. I'm so curious on what it is that she did that was so terrible that she went to the school to get a fresh start. Kay's best friend Brie is an open lesbian, gotta appreciate that rep, and Brie herself is actually bisexual. Hey y'all, editing that. So thinking back on this, actually neither of these characters ever for sure gave us their sexual orientation. I just assumed based on the fact that Brie was dating a woman and had only ever dated girls as far as we were told and Kay actually had a ex-boyfriend and had shown interest in some of the female characters but it's never officially stated which I thought was really interesting now that I'm looking back on it because it was treated so normally there was never any awkward fumbling of trying to explain their sexuality if they were getting hit on by either guy or girl they kind of just flowed through it seamlessly and I think that's really interesting and I think was very well done by Dana Mel and can really help normalize sexual orientation if it's not you know just heteronormative I would really like to see that more in books that's all Kay doesn't feel like she can trust any of her friends with this challenge that Jessica the victim has instilled upon her however she does entrust the secret to this other girl named Nola who is a goth and is exuding some Mad Wednesday Adams vibes. I'm really enjoying this one. I gotta say, the mystery has really had me hooked. I started it this morning and I've been listening to it almost constantly. Because this has reminded me of a favorite movie and a favorite book, I think I'm gonna be hopeful and give a five star estimated rating because I have really been enjoying this. I don't know if I'm going to hit it quite that high, but we're going to go for a positive outlook. So I have also finished People Like Us and I'm sad to say this was not a five star read like I predicted. Unfortunately, the pacing in the second half of this story really killed it, made it so wonky and took me out of what was happening because in the beginning it's just like so much suspense and drama and all of the suspicions around so many different characters that are people who really matter to Kay and that makes the stakes all the higher. Then it's like around the 60% mark there's just this drop. It feels like nothing really happens and that was just such a shame because the beginning half had me so enthralled. I do believe that the author did this to kind of try and lay the groundwork for you to start to suspect who the killer was and lead into the twist. The way it happened made that ending reveal a bit anticlimactic to me because I just didn't care anymore. I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And it's such a shame because the reveal of who the killer was, I think was well done. I enjoyed the ending reveal. I, although Kay in the beginning starts off very much as a character that is unlikable, in the latter half she becomes very guilty and being eaten alive by that feeling and all of her terrible actions she's done to other people, which I thought was interesting to see in her. We did get an end reveal of part of her backstory, dived more into what kind of a person she truly was. But again, the pacing just got so weird. Really kind of ruined my enjoyment of the ending because I was so into the first like 60% of this book. I have to give it four stars because I was enjoying it so much. I actually read this in a day. Hey y'all, so I have hit the halfway point in the Lion game and I don't know how to feel about this one. Eh, eh, yeah, that's a good descriptor. <laughs> For starters, this feels like a mix of I know what you did last summer and the last time I lied by Riley Sager. I don't know if it's just like a thing in dark academia, but I'm getting so tired 
of reading about dumb teenagers just lying and making up stuff about people for the fun of it. Why? I just don't get it. <laughs> it's the whole point of Dark Academia that all the like characters are total pretentious assholes. I get wanting a morally gray character, but like do something more original, please. For one, this has really short chapters, which I do really like because it makes it very easy to fly through. I have really have been flying through it. I hit the halfway point fairly quickly because it's very digestible and reads fast, but there are occasional shifts to like events that occurred in the past and there's never a clear time break between the present and the past and that gets a little confusing which can kind of mess with the flow of what's happening in the story. Along with that we actually get what I assume is supposed to be the big reveal at about the halfway point and it was so anticlimactic. I thought it was gonna be far more dramatic than it really was, especially coming off of people like us. This felt just blah. Hoping there's definitely going to be more to this because still have half the book to go and it'd be pretty bland if the rest of it was kind of just watching the fallout of the events so far. I don't know if I really care yet. I've heard Ruth Ware is one of those authors that people either really like her stuff or they really don't like her stuff and I'm kind of concerned I'm gonna become one of those who doesn't like her stuff because thus far I'm really underwhelmed. This is the first of her books that I've tried out and I think it's the only one that's really dark academia so perhaps it's that maybe I should try something else like one by one or the turn of the key maybe but wow I'm like not doing hot in this video but I'm gonna say an estimated two star rating for the time being. We'll see how the second half improves it. Hey y'all, so I have officially finished the line game and I'm sorry to say, I don't know if Ruth Ware is gonna be the one for me because I didn't really like this. This was pretty boring. By the end of it, I was actually skimming, mostly just to see, was I right in who I thought it was? Was I right for the motive? I was. The problem with this was she really tried to drag out revealing to us what had happened and the lead up to those events so much that when you actually found out what it was, it was super underwhelming. I said before, I was very much like, that's it. And then when we eventually started diving into a reasoning for what had happened, I was also just like, that's it didn't make for a good mystery for me there was also a big like final climax that i think she did to kind of make up for the lack of excitement through the rest of the book but personally i don't think it did that it wrapped up too cleanly and i didn't like that actually i think this is going to be the first time i give a one star in a five by five because honestly probably would have dnf this if i wasn't reading it for this video Hey y'all, I have officially hit the halfway point in Bunny by Mona Awad and wow, this is like probably up there for one of the weirdest books I've ever read. However, I'm loving it. Really just like lured me in with the normalcy when it comes to Samantha and then it just hit me like a train with all of the weird shit going on. So as I mentioned, this one is very focused on this group of girls who I'll call each other Bunny and are very like happy and peppy and very preppy, whereas Samantha is a lot more grunge and like the outsider. She actually has these like little nicknames for each of the members of the bunny group and I found them oddly hilarious, so I'm gonna share them. So Caroline is Cupcake, uh, Kira is Creepy Doll, which based on her description sounds like she would give me nightmares, Victoria is Vignette, and Eleanor is the Duchess. I assume the Duchess is kind of like the Regina George character, the Heather in red, oh what was her last name? I don't remember, but she's definitely like the leader and I've gotten some vibes off of her that maybe she might be the cult leader? I don't know, this has definitely had some cult undertones though, especially because there is a shift from initially we are seeing in first perspective with Samantha but it actually changes to a first perspective plural where she doesn't just say, I did this, it's we did this, 
we thought that, we decided on this. It feels like it's a hive mind. It's so weird. Part of me thinks they might be controlling Sam with like drugs or alcohol, but at the same time, there also is just this like underlying possibility that Sam actually really is just kind of going along with this because she wants to be part of the group, which ties back into my thoughts on the cult aspect. I do want to say when the horror comes into this, it comes in with a punch. I was not expecting it. It really like caught me off guard. I believe the academic focus here is on them writing literature. So naturally there have been so many references and allusions. The one that really stuck out to me, however, was Alice in Wonderland. And that's just because I can definitely see Samantha sort of being Alice and the bunny's weird circle is her wonderland. She thinks she's enjoying it and she wants it, but I did also want to give a special shout out to Ava, who is Samantha's like initial best friend at the beginning of the book, and she's kind of described as a goth pretty much and is very weird and unusual. She matches Samantha's outsiderness. Honestly, she kind of just feels like the Janice from Mean Girls, and I love that. Janice was my favorite character, so I'm living for Ava. I think I'm going to estimate four stars because I'm liking what I'm reading. I'm definitely intrigued. I need to know what's going on. Hey y'all, so I have officially finished reading Bunny by Mona Awad and I don't know what this was, but I liked it. It was so weird and unusual, a hair absurdist. Still not really sure I understand the ending, but I enjoyed getting there. Does that make sense? This story was filled with so many different social commentaries and had tons of metaphors and allusions to other work. I appreciate that this was aware of what it was and how it was sort of a parody of these previously done works like Heather's. At one point there was literally a line referencing a male character as he is Christian Slater with a bomb strapped to his chest. If you're unaware, that's a direct reference to something that happens in Heathers, which this book was very reminiscent of. I think it was fascinating that this was just filled with constant contradictions, particularly when it would come to the bunnies, because initially they do seem like very sweet and nice and fluffy, happy kind of people, but the more we learn about them and the more that's revealed to us, we realize they really are so much more. I don't want to say anything else because I don't want to give it away, but I just want to say they truly were some of the biggest contradictions in the story, and I think the way it was handled was done very well. I really do think this was reminiscent to Alice in Wonderland because it really felt as though Samantha was kind of falling down the rabbit hole and didn't know what all she had gotten herself into the further in we got. It was crazy. I don't know if I would really constitute this story as horror personally. I think I would say it is a bit of a graphic mystery with like fantastical and absurdity undertones. The entire time I was just so desperate to figure out what was happening because it was so weird and the way it was written just had me so invested. I, I still don't really know what happened in the end. Being completely honest, I've done some research into it and it seems that was done purposefully. I also just really appreciated some of the like feminist and classist discussions that were done in this story as well as like looking at privilege and how Sam reacted to these things when it came to other people but how she did so in a very like hypocritical way and she didn't like herself for it and I think it's something that's very relatable for people. In the end, I think I was right and this was a four star read. I can't give it a five star just because I still don't know if I understand it completely, but it was a fun ride. It was a good time. This was a weird book, but I recommend. I recommend a lot. <laughs> Hey y'all, so I have also hit the halfway point in Ninth House and I really don't know how to feel about this one. This is alternating back and forth between the points of view of Alex in the winter time and Darlington in the fall time. 
and all in the same year. So we do know something dramatic is going to happen that causes Darlington to disappear, die. I don't, I don't really know. I'm not a big fan of the alternating points of view because in Darlington's, it feels like it is focusing on world building and trying to establish the whole secret society, fraternities, like their different magic systems, while Alex's is much more focused on the mystery aspect. Because it alternates, I will finally get invested into the mystery, but then we'll have a Darlington chapter and all of the suspense and suspicion that's been building will plummet and I have to start back all over whenever I get to the next Alex chapter and I don't like that. I also don't like that occasionally we get these like excerpts from books about the societies that kind of feel info dumpy and sometimes I just don't really think they're all that necessary. Plus with Darlington's chapters, world building hasn't been very great because on the broad scale, I understand what's happening, but I still don't really understand the specificity of like what their fraternity's magic specialty is. That's a problem. There is a little guide at the back of the book that talks about the different houses on campus. There's definitely also just this dynamic between Darlington and Alex in Darlington's point of view that we've seen in which Alex is very much like the outsider, the bad girl, and is definitely getting herself into trouble, whereas Darlington is like the good, proper, rich guy and wants to try and protect her. I am literally waiting for them to just bang it out. Bang, okay? I also have very conflicting feelings on the writing. With one side of it, it is incredibly atmospheric. Reading this really puts me into a New England college campus during fall or winter time with all the brownstones and the leaves, like the chill air, all of that kind of stuff is very great. But at the same time, I can't decide on whether the pretentiousness of the writing is adding to the aesthetic of the story or if it's just alienating because sometimes it feels like it's just a bit too much. Finally, I just want to give a heads up. I knew there was a lot of sensitive topics covered in this and I was prepared for it going in, but I will say there is a sexual assault scene that really comes out of nowhere and very much caught me off guard. So I just really want people to be aware of that and possibly look up content warnings for this because I do think there are a lot of them. And if you might have an issue, check that out before trying this. Currently, I think I'm going to estimate a three star rating. It feels like she's trying to do too much in one book at this point. Hey y'all, so I have officially finished Ninth House and I do have to say the latter half of this book was a lot better than the beginning, but I still had my issues. First off, it took me a while to figure out what Alex's role really was within all of the secret societies. She is essentially a member of the Ninth House, which is called Lethe. Lethe is essentially supposed to ensure all magic is done safely and if it does cause any drama or is used improperly they will find out who is doing so punish them and kind of cover it up from the rest of the world i think that could have been much more clearly explained and actually lethe isn't even mentioned in any of the houses at this back portion so that's weird. Kind of in the same vein, um, the world building was a bit much given that it really didn't seem as though magic was too pertinent for most of the plot. It would be used as a tool and in that case I think it would be explained and made sense, but a lot of the background just felt a hair unnecessary and overwhelming. I think where magic was most important was in the Darlington plotline, but I have some issues with that in its own. Most of the Darlington portions of this story really could have been held back until the next book because it seems as though the next in the series is going to be very Darlington focused and I think given that those chapters made the plot in this a bit confusing really Lee Bardugo should have just left them out until later. Thankfully towards the end of the book the pacing got so much better because we were no longer seeing Darlington's point of view we were solely focused on Alex which I think really helped me remain invested in the mystery and the story so much more. There was just so much going on in this. There was like the world building, the magic system, there's main underlying mystery, there's kind of a mystery going on from Alex's past, there's what happened to Darlington going on, and then there's like a this possible overarching conspiracy 
and it was a lot. At one point when we actually dived into the what happened to Alex in the past, I honestly completely forgot that that was like a prevalent plot point. The point where we were diving into Alex's past came out of nowhere and really I think was in the wrong place because we were in the middle of a focus on the mystery plot line and Alex is in the middle of a fight when suddenly in the next chapter we jump into what happened in her past and the massacre she survived. Overall, I just think there was a lot of this book that could have been cut and the ending result would have been much better. In the end, I think I was correct in my estimated rating and I'm gonna go with three stars. This did have some good aspects to it, but I just think given that this is planned to be a series, Lee Bardugo should have waited on some of these additional plot points and dived into them later. All right, y'all, so that was the last book in my Dark Academia 5x5. And I have to say, I don't know if Dark Academia is for me. This was pretty middle of the road, unfortunately. However, thank you so much for coming to my channel today, guys. I really appreciate it. Make sure to hit like and subscribe down below. I come out with videos on Monday and Friday, but until then, I hope you continue to have a terrific day. Bye.